How you doing, everybody? For today's Pollock Academy, we're going to talk about Rosenwald Schools, an educational partnership for African Americans between Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald. We talk a lot in this unit about the great migration of African Americans to the North and West and the cultural revolution that changed society in the 1920s, called the Harlem Renaissance. But for this video, let's stay in the South. First, let's start with a refresher on who Washington and Rosenwald are. Booker T. Washington was an educator and civil rights activist known for his stance on vocational or job skills education and self-sufficiency. He founded the influential Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, which provided education, especially job skill education, for African Americans. Julius Rosenwald was a successful businessman and part owner of Sears and Roebuck in Chicago. You remember that Sears and Roebuck changed how we buy and receive products with the mail order catalog, the Amazon of the day. And in this mail order catalog, you can buy anything from hats to harmonicas to houses. What? And the products would just come to your door. These two men met in Chicago in 1911 and wanted to put their money and influence to help raise individuals from poverty by way of education. So from there, these men came up with the Julius Rosenwald Fund, or just simply Rosenwald Schools, improving education in the rural southeast states, where public funds for African American education was nowhere near equal. In the decades that we're focusing on, 1910 to 1940, you know the South offered little opportunities for African Americans and Jim Crow laws legally segregated races in public spaces, especially educational opportunities. In the years the Julius Julius Rosenwald Fund was set up, more than 5,000 schools in 15 states were built. 381 were built in Virginia. So what was the process of getting a school built in your community? Well, let's look at an example here in Portsmouth. You were looking at the former Key Road School, which is now Portsmouth Boulevard, by Douglas Park. This Rosenwald School is obviously repurposed into some sort of venue or community space right now. Look at the Key Road pie chart. You see that there are three steps to getting a Rosenwald School funded. First, you would need to raise money in your own community. Second, you would need the public or your city or county to put up some money too. And you see in this example, they gave a lot of money to this school. And once you successfully done those two things, the Rosenwald School would pay whatever's left. And these numbers depended on how big your school was, how big your city was, or how big your county was. The architecture of Rosenwald Schools followed the uniform pattern like products from a Sears catalog. You had one of seven plans to follow depending on the size of your school and the amount of teachers that were going to be in your school. And each one of these plans had room for a vocational education room, like a wood shop or a kitchen, and even room for a garden or small farm. You can recognize a Rosenwald school design by the large sets of windows, usually close together, because many of these Rosenwald schools were built before many areas in the South had electricity. So they needed to utilize natural light whenever they could. We're going to pause the narration of this video so we can take a deeper dive into the architecture of these Rosenwald schools. And I'm going to use this one that I'm sitting in front of. This is a one teacher plan example. First, I want to make sure that you saw the windows. I've already mentioned them in the video, but look at on the side and those two sets of two in the front. This is not just for natural light, as I've mentioned already, but it's for ventilation and cleanliness of the building. And I've also mentioned the plans of the Rosenwald schools, whether it was the one teacher example that I'm sitting in front of, or if it was a seven teacher example that was really big. These plans were developed at Tuskegee Institute and had to be followed correctly. Strict uniform plans meant lower cost and easier construction, because a lot of the times the community had to build the school themselves. And speaking of strict plans, I wanna let you in on an interesting detail. In all my examples, have you noticed that a lot of these schools are relatively the same color, a white or gray or off-white color? Well, that was a very strict rule with the Rosenwald Fund. And there's a reason behind that. They said that white paint increased natural light coming into the building. They also said that white paint was restful to the eyes of the students. And they said that white paint was sanitary. That means it was easy to clean and easy to be noticed when it needed to be clean. And they also said that white paint increased durability of the building if you painted it on the exterior wood. Pretty interesting, huh? Now back to the video. I will also add that these schools offered so much for the community. The building was to serve many aspects of the community, not just students. These Rosenwald schools offered mostly adult education classes and various clubs like women's clubs and farm clubs. And it was not uncommon to see members of the community taking care of the lawn or the flowers in the school. Today, there are many examples of Rosenwald schools still standing. Many universities and state historic associations are making great efforts to preserve and study Rosenwald schools. UNC Chapel Hill's archaeology department are currently digging around the grounds of some Rosenwald schools in Virginia, and they're finding some pretty cool things buried in the ground relating to school, such as pencils, erasers, chalk, and drinking glasses used by the students. And a lot of them have been repurposed into community centers, like this two-teacher designed Rosenwald School in Cortland, Virginia. And here's another example of a seven-teacher designed Rosenwald School that is now the East Suffolk Recreation Center. Notice how they kept the windows? 
The big picture about Rosenwald schools is that they represented resilient communities and the long fight for African American equality in the 20th century. Black education was separate and far from equal to the educational experiences of whites. It wouldn't be until 1954 that the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision is going to integrate public schools. But in some parts of the South, including Virginia, the old system continued until the late 60s. And today we're seeing rural African American communities preserve these Rosenwald schools as a symbol of community. There's also an effort to raise funds to get a Julius Rosenwald National Historic Site, and this would be the first site dedicated to a Jewish American. Thanks as always for listening to Pollock Academy Rosenwald Schools.